All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Jen Amos. And today I have with me serial entrepreneur and what he calls himself venture capital incubator, as well as the founder and CEO of Bow Wow Labs, Michael London. You can learn more about him and his company, Bow Wow Labs, amongst many, of course, at bowwowlabs.com. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jen. Nice to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to really uh, happy to have you. Um, so, Michael, I just thought I'd ask as a starting question. It's a new year. Uh, how's 2021 been treating you so far? Well, it's just been fantastic. Our new company just celebrated its 27th straight month of record sales. Uh, it, we've had a 100x growth. We went from $5,000 a month 27 months ago to over $500,000 this month on, on our way to a million dollars a month, we think by mid-year. Uh, I, I love that. I think it's so astounding. And considering how uh, millennials such as myself are all about having dogs before kids, um, I'm not surprised that your business is thriving, <laughs> especially in this time when all of us are stuck at home with our dogs um, and families. Well, that's definitely a factor in our growth. They're mm -hmm. home. Uh, they're spending a lot of time with their dogs. Uh, and uh, one really important factor for this company is it's very clear that people today uh, regardless of their age, think of their dogs as an extension of their family now. It's not the dog they put out in the snow at night. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the dogs are actually sleeping with them, with us all. So uh, it's, it's really a big factor in what we do. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when I was young and we did have a dog or we had multiple dogs. It was really weird. They, my, I think my dad was fostering them and then they'd be gone one day and it was a weird thing. But anyway, I just remember how it was so normalized to just have your dog outside. And then maybe take them into the garage to go to sleep today. You know, my husband and I, we don't have kids yet, but our child, our, our child, I call him our child. My dog <laughs> is what I jokingly say as my only child who um, hangs out with us and does everything with us. You know, we work from home. So, you know, I recently uh, just updated my, the wheels to my rollerblades so I can just, you know, kind of take him around town and, and exercise with him. But you know, he sleeps in the bed with us. We, you know, let him lick our plates if there's no onions in it. Cause I found out that's not good for dogs. Um, and, and everything like he's really just part of the family and we very much care a lot about his emotional well being, which is very much not something I did even 15, 20 years ago. So it's pretty astounding. Like you mentioned, like how, um, pet owners treat their, their pets so much differently now than, you know, even, even a couple of decades ago. Right. Exactly. You should be working for us. <laughs> Well, here I am. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Um, well, actually, Michael, let's backtrack a bit. For I know I'm already talking a lot, uh, sort of around your company. But for if people are hearing about Bow Wow Labs for the first time, tell us what your company is about. So um, we're all about uh, keeping dogs safe and healthy and happy. Mm. Uh, and uh, I'm a, a very uh, disciplined uh, entrepreneur. I, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. I've built three big national companies. Mm -hmm. And along the way, I've evolved, as you said at the start of the show, into what I call a venture capital incubator. My family investment vehicle for ventures um, uh, it looks at hundreds of ideas before we get involved. Mm. Uh, and I only get involved uh, if uh, a particular idea checks all the boxes. And the ideas come to me typically from entrepreneurs and small companies that have a big idea, but they don't have the team or the capital or the experience to execute. Mm -hmm. I won't take you through all the uh, boxes that I have to check, but I think three will be very helpful uh, to your listeners to, uh, to understand why I'm so excited about Bow Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I look for uh, 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 solutions to big problems in big markets. Mm -hmm. And that means there's something disruptive about the solution, because if it's not a, a disruption, it means there's big guys already in the space. And I don't want to fight the Googles of the world. I want to partner with them and ultimately sell them my companies. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I look for solutions that deliver what I call true value, mm -hmm. true value whether it's a, a agnostic as to whether the business uh, and a solution is B2B or B2C. And frankly, I don't care what industry it's in, mm -hmm. but the, it has to be solving a real problem. It's not something faddish. It's not tied to the, having the most clever copywriter. Mm -hmm. But by far the most ingredient that I look for when I look at a potential business that I want to get involved in, it's got to be what I have come to call a cookie cutter hockey stick. Hmm. And what I mean by that is that once you figure out the formula, the business inherently has to have the ability to scale explosively. Mm 
Mm. I'm not interested in building $10 million companies or taking 10 years um, uh, to build them. I build my companies to sell them, which mm. is what aligns me with my investors and my teams. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been retired three times. I don't do that very well. And I don't think I'm going to do it again. <laughs> uh, but during one of my retirements, I taught entrepreneurship at Duke mm -hmm. as a guest lecturer. And uh, on the last day of class every semester, the one thing I said to the kids was, in my view, there are five ingredients for success, which is a great product, a great plan, mm -hmm. a great market, enough capital. But by far, the most important ingredient is having the right people, great mm -hmm. people. And so I focus all of my career in building my companies, in surrounding myself with really good people. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, because I never want to do anything twice. Mm -hmm. My first company was HQ, the office space leasing company. That's a $3 billion business today. It's been rolled up by Regis. Mm -hmm. My second company was a retail catalog manufacturing company we took public. And my third company pioneered the whole concept of helping people buy cars. We help people buy about $5 billion worth of cars. Um, but it, it, you can have a great idea and a great market and all the money in the world, but if you don't have the right people, you're not likely to succeed. Mm -hmm. And you can get by with not enough money and an okay idea if you really have the right people who can pivot and who can morph and do what is necessary to succeed. Mm -hmm. This little idea, Bawa Labs, came to me uh, through my banker. My wife and I are founding shareholder, has been my banker for 35 years. Jim called me one day and he said, Michael, would you talk to my youngest, Scott? Uh, he's got a great idea, but he's getting a divorce and he wants to go off to mm -hmm. Tahoe and be a ski bum. And I said, sure, I'll talk to him. So Scott comes in and talks to me and he tells me this story. His dog choked on the last inch of a bully stick. A bully stick is the number one dog treat for dogs today. Do you right, give your right. dog bully sticks? Oh, when he was a puppy, uh, he was all about it, but um, he had a habit of swallowing it. So we. Exactly. So it's a 200,000 visit problem. Mm -hmm. It's a $50 million problem. And he said he rushed the, the dog to the vet. The vet saved the dog. And as he was walking out, he said to the vet, what could I have done differently? The vet laughed and said, don't give him bully sticks. <laughs> so he went home and he looked on the web for some advice. And the only advice he could find was put the bully stick into a vice grip. But be careful. The dog can break his teeth when he gets to the bottom of the bully stick. Mm. He thought that was crazy. Mm -hmm. His credit, he spent $50,000 getting a first rate design uh, designer and they de designed this device to hold the bully stick. And at that moment, he reached into his briefcase and brought it out and showed it to me. And the moment I saw it, all mm -hmm. I could see was dollar shave club. Wow. I was looking at the razor and the bully sticks were the blades. We put together a fabulous team of people, people that are experts in marketing, manufacturing, every aspect of what it would take to be successful. And we, I always do a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. If the proof of concept doesn't work, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem shutting things down, giving it away, giving it back to the entrepreneur. Uh, uh, we designed a Kickstarter campaign. And in the summer of 2018, mm -hmm. we launched with two objectives. The first was, is there a market for a, a device to hold bully sticks? But most importantly, we had a thesis. We think there's 45 to 50 million homes out there of people like you and me who have dogs who think of their dogs as an extension of their family. Mm -hmm. Could we learn to speak to them in a way that resonated where we could earn their trust and deserve their trust? Mm -hmm. Out of 600 Kickstarter pet industry campaigns, we had a top 10. Wow. We used that two months later to launch the company. We did a whopping $5,200 in November of 2018. We've had 27 straight months of success. We did $506,000 in January. We launched six bully buddies, six different sizes for dogs five to 500 to 150 pounds, five SKUs of dog of bully sticks. We now have treats and we have a long roadmap of products coming. So the business is on its way to being a very big company. And I fund the companies in the early days until they're ready to raise money. Mm -hmm. Once they're really ready to go, once I'm sure they're going to be successful to the extent I can, mm -hmm. I raise outside capital. My companies have raised about $400 million in debt and equity um, uh, over uh, my career. And we are about to do a $10 million Series A, half of which is going to be a strategic um, 
uh, uh, financial family office institutional raise. But the other half we're very excited about we're going to do a crowdfunding, an equity crowdfunding campaign with Start Engine, mm-hmm. the leading Start Engine platform uh, in the country today. Uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Start Engine, is the face of Start Engine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to be raising, uh, we hope, $5 million. We're going to start off with a million dollar raise. Uh, and if we hit that target, like we did with our crowdfunding at Kickstarter, then we'll raise it to two, and then three, and then four, and then five. So we think we can use that $10 million to fuel uh, explosive growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, as I said, I build my companies to sell them, which is what aligns my interests with my teams and my shareholders. Um, And uh, uh, the business has just been so much fun. We, if you go on our website to uh, VawaLabs.com, you'll, the people, you would think we came up with a cure for cancer. Um, (laughs) People love the products. We have, Lots of great ideas uh, mm-hmm. coming to us from our, our our customers. Hey, how how about this and how about that? Mm-hmm. So uh, we've just launched um, a very important part of our business at Thanksgiving called Bow Wow Now. Bow Wow. Mm-hmm. The way to think about Bow Wow Now, it's Amazon Prime for dogs. Oh man! <laughs> so you can order your bully sticks to come on a regular basis. You'll be able to order lots of products. And we have a host of very exciting new products and services that we'll be announcing starting in about 90 days. And every couple of months, we expect to be coming out with another new idea, new product. Wow. I just have to uh, commend you, you know, Michael, first of all, of just, I think your overall entrepreneurial career, it sounds like you've really developed um, an eye for these things, an eye for these types of opportunities, you know, from the you explaining from this person pulling out this object out of his bag to put with the bully stick. And you just kind of knew like that, that's going to make a lot of money. That's going to be really successful and being able to bring a team together, um, you know, to make it work. And here you are growth 27 months in a row. Um, and now starting bow wow now, which I think is so timely, (laughs) maybe it's just because, you know, like I said earlier, I'm a millennial and I think this is, you know, people like to get dogs before they consider kids. If they ever choose to have kids at this point, I know a lot of millennials are starting to have kids later in life if they do choose that. But, uh, until then, um, just knowing that they can have access to these products, um, just as quickly as you would, um, you know, having Amazon prime, for example, is I think very astounding and very exciting. Well, what makes us really different, that first of all, it's not me. Thank you very much for that compliment, but <laughs> it's really the people around me. We have mm-hmm. a world-class um, uh, a chief marketing officer, a world-class chief financial officer, a world-class chief operating officer. We punch so far above our weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got people on our boards of advisors. We've got three incredible PhDs uh, working mm-hmm. on tech products that are coming. Um, the, it, it's all about uh, uh, getting very experienced, seasoned professionals who know how to build companies and couple them with, we have an incredible young team. Mm. Uh, I have always promoted our young people very quickly. If you're hardworking, smart, and you have a work ethic and you really care, uh, you can go very, very quickly through my companies, rise up. In fact, one of the things I'm most proud of is how many uh, people that have worked for me that are CEOs and uh, own their own companies today. Mm. Uh, that, that, that really brings a smile to my face. So it's not me, it's really having the team. And it's really, uh, uh, you know, when you're a small company, you can be very nimble, mm-hmm. you can go fast. You, you can't be afraid to fail. It isn't a matter of failing, it's a matter of getting back up and trying mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have lots of ideas, we move very quickly. And when you look back and you go, oh my God, you've grown so unbelievably fast. Yeah, but we've made mistakes along the way. Mm-hmm. It's not all, you, you can't be right all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to be right 51% of the time. Yeah. Well, you know, Michael, I still need to credit you because even though you make it about your team, you had an eye, you know, for these types of people to surround yourself with. And so, you know, I think about even my own entrepreneurial journey and part of a lot of my setbacks was maybe partnering with the wrong people. And so um, could you give us maybe some advice on, you know, how do you, How do you know that this person is the one or this team is the one? Um, How do you sort of filter that? Well, of course, a lot of it is is experience. Um, Mm -hmm. But um, I I do something very unusual in my startups. Mm -hmm. I don't pay anybody. Mm -hmm. In other words, if people aren't willing to be a partner 
for equity mm -hmm. in the early days, then it's not a good enough idea. Because mm -hmm. as I said, I'm always a rookie in the beginning. I have never been in the pet space. So I don't know anything in the beginning. So I've got to come up to speed fast. I've got to learn the industry. So I've surrounded myself. One fella uh, has been in the pet industry for 50 years. Our mm -hmm. chief nutritionist is one of the top nutritionists in the country and owns one of the most successful retail pet stores in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our technical people, everybody is a pro. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the hardest person to hire is the first one. Mm -hmm. Because after you get the first one, I don't hire the second one until the first person also agrees that they're the right person. Then you have three. Mm -hmm. And then when you hire the fourth person, they have to meet. Mm -hmm and be acceptable to the rest of the team because we're like it's like trying to win the super bowl you can have 10 superstars but if you got one weak spot on that team they're going to the other side's going to exploit it so you have to have great people and so we have been very lucky i lose very few people mm. but, but we're very careful we really look long and hard we try to evaluate what do we need mm -hmm. is it a marketing person a tech person, a supply chain person. What is it we're trying to do? And um, we've designed this business to scale explosively by outsourcing almost everything, design, manufacturing, fulfillment, and e-commerce. So we have a very small team. So that, that growth from 5,000 to 500,000, we didn't add an awful lot to our overhead. Mm. We think the same thing's going to happen if we can get to a hundred million, which we think we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to be adding hundreds of people. I've been there. I've done that. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, you don't have to do it. So it, it's really about finding people who are, I mean, it's just common sense, smart, yeah. hardworking, really have a passion for what they're doing. Um, you know, people that are looking at their watch going, oh, it's almost five o'clock. I got to get out of here. Um, we don't hire those kind of people. Yeah, I think uh, what really um, stood out to me, Michael, is when you said that, you know, if they're not willing to work for free or work for equity at the beginning, then it's not necessarily a good enough idea. Um, and so I really like that kind of selling this vision, selling this idea, this concept that people are willing to uh, work for free um, to earn that equity where, you know, maybe this is just in my own experience. Um, but I just, sometimes people say, Oh, if people are trying to offer equity, that's a, that's a red flag. Like you don't know how much, you know, work you're, you know, you don't know how much work you're going to put into it. If anything, you're going to put more work in it, into it for, for so little, if anything at all. So I just love sort of, I just love that confidence you know, and, and again, you were mentioning, it goes back to having that experience to know how to pick the right people. Um, and, you know, just, I just really wanted to acknowledge that and say, that's, that's very powerful. Like your approach. Well, look, a lot of people have been burned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm an unusual entrepreneur in that I'm not looking to have all the, the money wind up in my pocket. I, mm -hmm. I love when we get across the finish line and, and everybody's got a smile on their face. And we mm -hmm. don't ask people to work for very long. Mm -hmm. you know, and we don't ask young people, junior people to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're a senior person, you made a few dollars in your life, you can afford uh, to, to to come in as a partner uh, and we start paying people as quickly as we can. Now they don't get to market salaries very quickly mm -hmm. um, because it's all based on, let's get to our targets, let's hit our milestones, let's get profitable. Um, it, 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 we're very disciplined. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about, you know, uh, getting to 500,000 isn't an accident. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. plan to get here. We didn't plan to get here quite this fast. We're actually ahead of schedule. But the point is, it's a matter of making sure, um, you, you know, Ronald Reagan said, trust, but verify. Mm -hmm. And what he meant by that is it's okay to do things on a handshake, but you do things in black and white. You, mm -hmm. you have good agreements. Uh, we've had great strategic partners. You know, we're going to be growing this company um, uh, two ways. We're going to be growing it organically as quickly as we can. But I've also made acquisitions along the way. We've mm -hmm. just consummated. We're not done yet, but we're in our due diligence, but we're buying our first company already, mm -hmm. which is a company with some fabulous technology and an incredible product that will fit beautifully into what we want to do. And I've had a half a dozen conversations already, even mm -hmm. though we're only two years old with companies uh, that potentially uh, we could acquire. So 
will be growing organically, will be growing by acquisition. But at the end of the day, all of that is at the really comes down to who, who's making the decisions, how good are they, and what kind of controls do we have in our system to make sure that um, we minimize mistakes. We can't avoid mistakes, but can we minimize them so that you learn from them and you move on to the next, uh, 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 you know, deliverable, the next to do. Mm -hmm. And also, I just wanted to comment on, um, you know, how I feel like I can tell you don't necessarily do it for the money. Obviously, it's great to make it. But the fact that you've gotten out of retirement three times <laughs> already tells me that you're really doing this for more than just the money. I, I absolutely love what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I retired for the first time, the last time in 2001 and spent about 10 years living on the beach in Fort Lauderdale and a half in uh, uh, Northern California. And I finally, it was like, I'm going stir crazy. <laughs> and so I got back in the saddle and uh, I love what I do. I love having great people around me. Yes, it's great to finish, get across the finish line, sell mm -hmm. the company, everybody celebrates. Um, uh, but that that's just the consummation of a lot of hard work and smart work. And yeah. the reason I yeah. really want to do this equity crowdfunding is that, you know, I want small entrepreneur, small uh, investors to have a chance to invest in a hot startup. They never get a chance to do that. It's always the, you know, the big money that gets, uh, gets a chance to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So this is very mm -hmm. important to me uh, that we, we have small investors, you know, people that have 500, a thousand, two thousand dollars that have a chance to invest in us at this early stage. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we're going to be looking for very sophisticated, smart, strategic investors um, uh, who who can write the big checks because to grow a big company takes money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it's very funny. Uh, we've had a couple of people look at us and they go, you know, you look a lot more like a Silicon Valley startup than you do a pet space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I laugh and I go, well, that's not an accident, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, but it is fun. Um, I love the people that we have working for us. I love mm -hmm. our customers. Um, um, and, uh, it, it's just a fun business because everybody loves their dogs. Yeah. I was going to say like, what's not fun about doing stuff for your dogs, you know, and having dogs and being around people who love dogs. Um, I feel like that's my preference nowadays is like, Oh, you have a dog. Okay. We're friends. <laughs> you know, well, I was going to bring my vice president of testing uh -huh. uh, up here to show you, but he, he's out for a walk. <laughs> oh, boo. <laughs> yeah, Nicky Moose is a, uh, a Havanese mm. uh, and, and he's diabetic and he's blind, but he, you'd never know it until you saw him bounce off a, a fire hydrant or fall off the curb. Oh um, but uh, we, we get so many great stories from people with the dogs and their bully buddies. Uh, the bully buddy is the name of the device that mm -hmm. holds the bully sticks. Um, so if you don't have a bully buddy yet, you better get one for your dog. Yeah, I definitely um, am going to look that up on the website for sure. And, uh, you know, um, we just celebrated our, I think it was four year anniversary with our dog. Now we re he's a rescue from uh, Mexico and uh, he's been, he, it's been great having him. And like I said, he's like, I call him my only child and every anniversary of sorts where, whether we, it was our foster day anniversary or adoption day anniversary or his birthday, we always try to get something. So this is going to be on my list of things to look at. <laughs> so thanks, Michael. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, rescues uh, are going to be our, uh, how we give back. Mm. Uh, you know, there's 5 million dogs adopted uh, out of rescues and humane societies every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and while they're in the cages, um, if you go on most rescues websites, the number one thing they ask for are bully sticks. Wow. And we think that they, those dogs in cages deserve to be as protected as a dog in a loving home. So yeah. we want to get bully buddies in the hands and bully sticks in the hands of those rescues. So we're going to be, uh, we had two care packages on our Kickstarter campaign, one for 250 and one for $500, where we actually then doubled it mm -hmm. and gave, uh, gave those to, to rescues. So uh, starting uh, sometime in the next three to four months, we're putting the program together now, we are going to be trying to get bully buddies and bully sticks in the hands of rescues for, for the dogs that are uh, waiting to be adopted. And we, and we'd love all those 5 million parents that take those dogs home to go home with a bully buddy care package. There you go. Little goodie bag. I love it. I love it so much, Michael. I want to make sure that I've covered all my bases here in regards to uh, Bow Wow Labs, Bow Wow Now, 
holy buddies. I just love all the bees. <laughs> Is there anything else you want our listeners to know about your company, about yourself, or just anything else you want to share with us? Well, you know, um, I, I have a couple of philosophies uh, on mm-hmm. how I run my companies. Uh, the first is a very simple one. Just keep your promises mm. to your customers, your employees, your vendors, your investors. You mm-hmm. can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the second is there's just no substitute. I don't want to sound like a Boy Scout, okay? But there's just no substitute for integrity uh, and, and honesty. Uh, you know, I think the reason our investors uh, and my teams trust me is because they know I don't play hide the football. Mm. You know, no business, no matter how good, goes in a straight line. There are Mm -hmm. speed bumps. There are problems. And if you try to hide that information from anybody, then they will not trust you. You will not deserve their trust. But if you do deserve their trust and you are open with your problems, Mm -hmm. whatever they may be, people want to help you, whether they be your investors, your customers, or your teams. Um, And so, you know, it's... it's, it, it's business is actually pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Just good products, keep your promises, do what you say you're going to do. Don't cheat people. I know that sounds crazy, but, but in today's day and age, you know, they, they, there's a lot of people out there that are out to, uh, you know, make a quick buck and will, you know, people that are selling masks that are supposedly the, you know, these safe masks, but they're not, they're, they're counterfeit. That's mm-hmm. a horrible thing to do. Mm-hmm. So what we're all about is having really great products mm-hmm. that really keep, to our brand. Our brand is simple. Keep dogs safe, healthy, and happy. That's it. And Mm -hmm. we're not going to sell cute stuff just because it's cute and can make us some money. It's really going to deliver on our promises. Beautiful. On that note, Michael, wow. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for what you do um, for all of the fur parents out there. Um, And again, I enjoyed our conversation today. So thank you. Thank you, Jen. It's been a pleasure being with you today. Yes. Bye-bye. And again, and again, to our listeners, this is Michael London, founder and CEO of Bow Wow Labs, also a serial entrepreneur and what he calls venture capital incubator. You can learn more about him and his company at bowwowlabs.com. Thank you all so much for joining us and we'll chat with you in the next episode. Tune in next time.